All right, welcome to uh, the last day of calculus. And here's the thing that calculus is for, man. It's all about the shapes. There are all these curves out there, and we got to learn as much as we possibly can about the curves. And sometimes pre-calculus isn't enough to know everything about the curves. Sometimes you got to learn. So, no, I don't want to talk about the summer math packet. What? There is the summer math packet. Oh, is throw out this big giant circle? Oh, yeah. Wait. What? Oh, yeah. You used to have a big giant circle. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Hey, wait, hold on. I mean, why am I not using this? Glad I turned the camera on. Good. Big giant circle. Alright. Um, so, as, as I mentioned, this is a big giant circle. And here is what happens. Um, to this circle. If it rolls um, along the ground, a point on this circle will trace out a certain path. Whoa. And that path is called a cycloid. All right, let's do it. The people watching in the video probably can't see any of this. Oh. Uh, just think. Good. All right. So, like, this is a little harder than it looks. Can, can you like feed me some tape, then? <laughs> you gotta kind of roll. Just, yeah. How about you just hold, hold this? Hold this. Yeah. Good. Woo! All right. Uh, good. So now, I guess we could have prepared this in advance. Yeah. This is like more fun, maybe, right? Um, yeah, good. And this is like not a good job that I'm doing either, even. Yeah, usually when you try to be safe. Whoa. Whoa. That's funny. Why? Yo, I have to focus the camera, everybody. Oh, no, he's done. I don't okay, good. So all right. Why are camera you people out still okay. on some pushers? Okay, good. So, so that's what um, here I have a circle, and I'm going to roll this circle um, along the board. And when you do this, you get what you get is a cycloid. So I'll start um, in the kind of corner here, and then... This works pretty well, Whoa, it does matter. Do I have to loosen this first? Oh, that's why it's hard. Yeah, I know it's, you're right, because part of the And then it's going to like, it's going to go boop, and it's going to be like pointy, right? Yeah. Well, but I like to mess it up slightly. No, it's just like a bunch of stuff. Whoa. Okay, good. <laughs> so, all right, can you like cap that marker somehow? Possibly by taking it off. Okay, behold, this is the cycloid. Cool? All right, so, what are. Oh, wait, 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 don't, 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 um, what kinds of natural questions are there about this shape, the cycloid? Yeah. How can, what function can we use to represent it? Yeah, okay, so like, can you come up with some like equations that describe the cycloid? Sure. Um, so that's going to be like, that, that, I think of that as like maybe like a means to like the end of like even more basic simple questions such as. How much do you think? Obviously, it's going to depend on the circle. So, what do you think? Yeah, give me a guess. It looks like the radius is the diameter of that big circle. Like the radius of that half circle. Oh, well, that's certainly, in fact, that's just like true, right? Yeah, right? I mean, because the, the, the height of this thing is, okay, so call the radius of this circle, like little r. It's certainly true that like the height of the cycloid is going to be, you know, two r. So that, that's your observation, right? Also, if you're if you're thinking of the angle that it's rolling in radians, then it's going to take like two pi radians. That's like a complete. That's like one complete roll. Yeah. So then we're back to where we where we started. But also, like, yeah, how much? How many circles do you think can fit inside here? Two. Uh, two. Uh, two. Uh, 
sort of take an arbitrary point on this cycloid. Let's take one that's, it all works out better if you pick an angle that's like not too uh, big yet. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to trace the circle if I can. Or someone else can do this for me. Or I can do it. Alright, so there's like my circle. Okay, and yeah, it's going to be like not exact, but like that's pretty good. And then the center of this thing's maybe like up here-ish. Hopefully I picked that good enough. Is that good? Is that good? Yeah, now then I'm sad, because I need it to be like above this point. Is it not above the point? It's like, it is, it's like on uh, this All right, riveting video, second try. So go down a little lower. Yeah. 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 Now, does it look a little bit more like the center is like here? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, but now that means like we really have to get all in super close to figure out what the hell's going on. So what is going on? This is the center of my circle. This point is like my arbitrary point. And uh, as Mark said, I guess the goal, or step one, is to figure out maybe the equation of the cycle. So let's call this point x comma y. Well, now it's just a matter to figure out what x is, to figure out what y is, in terms of two things. Basically, the radius of the original circle and how far we've like rolled, so to speak. And um, uh, I guess uh, to understand what's going on, right, like here we start, right? And then by the time you roll to this point, it's like we've covered a certain amount of like arc from the big circle. And so I guess it's like, um, I guess it's like this angle, uh, it's like to the bottom, right? It's like the bottom of the circle? Yeah. Right, because we start down here. So we start, we start with, the, with the mark, with the point all the way in the bottom of the circle. And we've rolled up here. So now what that means is, this is the sort of the hardest part is to recognize this that it's like this arc, which I'm drawing in red, this is like the length of the arc that's done the rolling. Who's with me? Yeah. The red represents the amount of the circle which has been rolled. Okay, and if that's the amount of the circle which has been rolled, then what's like the one sort of geometry fact now that I have to use? What is equal to that red length? The part from the... Uh, On the ground, right? Yeah. Yeah. If the, this, this red equals this green, that's like the key observation, right? Where if you drop a perpendicular from the center, so what I've, what I've done is I've taken, a, I've taken a circle of radius r with the marker, like on the bot, with the point to be rotated on the very bottom. I've rolled that circle by a certain angle. Let's call that angle that we've rolled theta. And if we've rolled an angle theta, then in fact, drawing in radii here, like that angle is theta. Who's with me? And this is little r, this is little r. And if we've rolled through an angle theta, then the length of the arc on the circle that has rolled is equal to like the distance that we've made. Cool? All right, hard part done. Now we just like bust out a little bit of geometry and we just like get the equation. So here we go. If this little if this little angle is theta, and I well maybe you should do it, right? What what do I what's one observation? Two divided by theta over the total 
those weren't words that I heard out loud. Oh, two pi r. Okay, yeah, so Daphne is saying that the circumference of the entire circle is 2 pi r, so therefore um, this angle is like theta of that, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, um, so actually it's just like, it's just r theta, right? That's the thing. Because if you have, if you have a circle and, you, and this is r and this is r and this is theta and this length is like x or whatever, we, we've done this before then the, the length x is to the total circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, as theta is to, if you're doing it in radians, 2 pi. And therefore, uh, x equals r theta. Cool? OK, so that's just like a math fact. If you do your um, calculations in radians, then uh, the length of this red thing just is r theta, which means also that this green thing is r theta. Yeah? Which means I'm almost. Uh, ready to say what the x coordinate is then. What do I do to get to the x coordinate? So I could go over by r theta and back by however much this is. And how much is that? Drop a perpendicular that way. This little guy here is r sine theta. And this is so, uh, I think we're done, right? X is r theta minus r sine theta, and y is, you now go up and then r plus, or sorry, my, uh, yeah, r minus r cosine theta. Woo! All right. So that's like uh, that's like well, that's like pretty cool. So those are the parametric equations those are? for yeah. for a um, cycloid. And like we we um, um, now can you cap that back marker? Uh, we uh, a good tip whenever you're trying to figure out the um, the equations of these geometric objects is to like. Let, make sure your angle theta is like still in the first quadrant so everything's like chill and like followable. All right, how are we doing? Good. Now we can start to answer some questions. Once I have the equations, now we can like do some math. So I got two problems basically. Problem one um, that I want to answer. What is the area under one arch of this cycloid? And what is the length of one arch of the cycloid? Whoa, something you've never done before. It's actually the first thing you're going to do next year. So it's like a preview. All right, uh, let's go. Well, here's this is another thing we never did, but it's like actually total kind of common sense, right? You have some uh, shape. If you have some shape which has been defined parametrically, so suppose you have some parametric curve, uh, and the curve is going kind of like this or whatever, and you're here at t equals a, and you're here at t equals b, and suppose what you want to find is the area underneath this parametric curve. Well, how should we find the area underneath the parametric curve? Um, can agree. Can agree. Can agree. Suppose I already have the parametric equations. We're just even just simple. You guys are giving me the algebra things. Like, how am I going to find this area? Just say. Rectangles. Yeah, good. Make rectangles. Good. Uh, yeah, so split this up. Split this up into a bunch of rectangles and just add up all the rectangles, man. That's like what integration is, right? All right, well, like, what are the dimensions of this arbitrary rectangle that I've just drawn? Well, the height of the arbitrary rectangle is basically just like y, being real casual now, yeah. And this little width is dx. Yep. Yeah, if you're just taking, uh, if you're taking uh, uh, sort of these infinitesimals uh, seriously. Okay, so there it is, man. You just take the y times dx, and you just add them all up. That's it. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to do here. If I want to find, um, if I want to find the area um, under the cycloid, then here's here's my plan. Um, basically find the area of one of these little rectangles. So, um, and so I want to sum up a whole bunch of rectangles, all of which are of the form y dx. 
And that should just loose, that should rough, intuitively, that should do it. Okay, well, what is y? Yeah. It's, it's like r minus r uh, cosine theta. And what is dx? Well, I guess I should differentiate x with respect to theta. So what is dx d theta? R minus r cosine theta. R minus r cosine theta. Oh, fact, just fact, oh. right? So therefore, dx is r minus r cosine theta d theta. Again, doing calculus like someone who's not scared of infinitesimals. I'm not scared. Whoa. Uh, and there we go. This is y, and this is dx. So this is r minus r cosine theta d theta. And what should I do with all of those things? Sum them up. <laughs> Sum up. So take the integral from? But for this problem, <coughs> start when theta is zero and end when theta is two pi. Go. 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 Actually, making us do work. How about you just do it at the board? How about you just do it? I'll do it. Uh, all right. Uh, go from zero to two pi of oh, r squared. Uh, what is that? Like minus two r cosine theta. Um, plus r squared cosine squared theta. Did I do that right? You check my work. Uh, good, I can work faster with that, you guys, anyway. Oh, dang. Oh, 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 also, I might be like messing up with that, you guys. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? That's yeah. Oh, no, it's no, r squared. squared. Yes. Yeah. So, really, now we have this integral, which is like. You know, I wouldn't call it easy, but I wouldn't call it impossible either. It's 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. Do we know how to do this integral? Like, yeah, but like, we have to like, do that thing, man. I bet 60% of you like, know exactly what to do when you must differentiate cosine squared. Oh, yes. Got it. You use yes. the like, yeah, there's like the cosine 2 theta identity which says that it's 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, and then you solve for cosine squared theta, which is then like that plus 1 over 2, yeah? So cosine 2 theta plus 1 over 2. And so there we have it. This is going to be uh, the any derivative of 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus um, 1 half cosine 2 theta plus like another half, agree? Yeah. Okay, do I have enough room to finish it on this line? Looks like not. Uh, all right, so now I think we can anti-differentiate this because this is like one and a half is like, that's like three halves, yep. Zero to two pi, good. So we have r squared times, um, let me do this lazy style, that's like three halves, so that's like three halves theta, but then what's the derivative of negative 2 cosine? I guess it's like negative 2 sine, so negative 2 sine theta, and then the derivative of this is going to be um, like ma plus 1 4 sine 2 theta, uh, 0 and 2 pi. Uh, let me just double check that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, but now look, man, this, these, these two are both zero at both zero and two pi. So what do we get? Ah, this is r squared times three halves times two pi. Answer. Ah, three pi r squared. Whoa. Fact, you can fit exactly three of the rolling circles um, inside um, a cycloid. And there's some actually some really cool yeah, animations that, that... Michael, you should like lower your head for, head for like five seconds. Ooh. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Woo. All right, that was exciting. God Wait, it, here's <laughs> more. Good. Now what I want to do is I want to know the length of this curve. Well, this is like a whole topic, but like I said, you can do like the day one of analysis 1B, arc length. 
how do you find the length of an arc? <laughs> you just do it, man. Like, yeah, that's it, man. what Archimedes did. If he wanted to know the length of a circle, <laughs> he would just, what did he do? Yeah. It's not why it's called arc. Oh, I don't know. I hope not. I hope I doubt it. Um, uh, you want to land arc, you just split it up into little tiny pieces, right? That's the beauty of integration. If you want to know the length of some arc, then you just split it up. Choop. 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 Etc. into a bunch of little line segments. And so, in general, yeah. Like, what? Just, just roll, and then you're fine. Dude, Daphne's lovely, but I can't hear her. Um, so, like, Daphne, just check it out, right? Imagine you have just some curve. So here's, like, here's, like, my, here's, like, my curve. Woo! Okay, and I want to know how long this curve is. From here, um, t equals a, to here, t equals b. Let this be a parametric curve, because that's the one we're doing anyway. All right, well, basically, even such a notion as, like, length of a curve requires some, like, thought and discussion as to what that even means. So we have an intuitive sense of what it means. It's like if you had a string or something like that, and you laid it exactly on the curve, and then you stretch the string out, how long would it be, right? Okay, but, like, ultimately, it's because it's curving infinitely often, like, the very notion of, like, length of something curvy, we're comparing it to, like, something straight. So somehow, like, straight lines are, like, the only things that we can really find the length of. And so, once you sort of think deeply about what this even means, you realize that like we can't actually find the exact length. We can only find an approximation, and then let our approximation like be perfect, right? And so, ultimately, what we do is we take a bunch of different points on this curve, um, very close together, and then we find what the length of the line connecting those two points is. And that's just like the hypotenuse of like a little triangle, yeah. Without the and so this little guy here is like, is like the small delta x that happened between my two sample points. This is like the small delta y that happened between those two sample points. And so this little length here, let's call it delta s. And of course, what is delta s? Yeah, it's just like root delta x squared plus delta y squared. All right. Um, it just makes so much sense, right? And if I just add up those infinite number of thingies uh, of little tiny approximate lengths, and then I let the points be infinitely close together, then I'll get that exact curve. Follow? And so that's exactly what we do, right? We take uh, we take this this distance, which I'll just call it like dx squared plus dy um, squared, and we just like add them all up. Or I guess I should still continue to use um, sigmas for like a second. Uh, and, and okay, now we can sort of do this thing because if this is a parametric curve, which it is in this case, then um, what I'm now going to do, I guess, is I'll, I'll replace um, dx with what's the smooth way of doing this? Uh, I'll replace dx with like dx d theta d theta or something like that, I guess. Right, because so so this is like dx d theta d theta plus dy d theta d theta. Um, why am I doing that? Because I don't really know what like. Okay, I, I guess I'm just kind of uh, I'm now sort of taking uh, uh, the limit as these things are getting really really small. Um, dx is becoming like infinitely small. And now I just pull d theta just out of the radical. And what I get is the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared um, d theta. Who follows the algebra there? Yeah. Uh, and you just integrate from a to b. Yo, a and b are theta values. Yeah. It's kind, of it's kind of weird. It makes complete sense though, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. Stein will give you like a more uh, careful uh, explanation of it, but it's really not going to be much different than this. What's uh, up? This is Joy's phone. <laughs> can you give it to Leave it lying around. I'm sure okay. nothing can go wrong. All right. Um, all right, good. So let's do it. I want to find the length of one arc of this cycloid. So I pick. Um, I partition the sort of a theta interval from 0 to 2 pi up into like many, many tiny little subintervals, and I find all these tiny little lengths. 
and I'm basically, loosely speaking, going to integrate like the square root of these little, little tiny changes uh, in the in the, the distance between these little tiny points. That's like the loose thing. But then the actual thing is, we're going to go the square root of dx d theta, which I already did, right? It's like r minus r cosine theta squared uh, plus dy d theta. Oh, I guess. I guess, you know what, I guess an even more smooth thing to do, this was kind of like a, this was sort of a gibberishy. I guess if I, was, if I was a little bit cooler, I would have done the following. I would have said, this is like totally intuitive, right? So then, why not just like, why not just, yeah, why not just use that actual thing that's right there, which is r minus r cosine theta d theta. Is, it just is dx, right? That's, this is like a better explanation. So we're taking dx and we're squaring it. Plus, um, well, I didn't have any reason to do it before, but I do now. What is dy d theta? It's like one minus like um, one plus r sine. Wait, the derivative of r is just zero. R sine theta. Oh, my bad. It's okay. Sine theta. Oh, thank you, Sharia. Yeah. So therefore, dy is r sine theta d theta. So why not just directly stick that in there? That's just a better explanation. So what is dy? It's just r sine theta d theta. r sine theta um, d theta squared. Woo! Yep. In the first line, why is there a d theta word? I kind of like, just let me just do like that. Okay. And just be just casual. This is casual. Um, probably we need to like back some of this crap up with like, you know, the mean value theorem and stuff like that, but no one feels like doing that right now. So, uh, but this is intuitively, this is all correct, yeah? Okay, good. Oh, 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 what now? Well, now I can like sort of take the d theta's like out of the radical, right? And so this actually becomes the square root of r minus r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared d theta. And I want to integrate from 0 to 2 pi. All right. Um, well, uh, how do we do this integral? Looks hard. Careful. Good, let's go. Um, I can pull an r out of here and here, right? Because like they get squared and then they just go out. Can I like skip steps so I finish on the same board? So this is zero to two pi. The r just comes down to end up with root. Hopefully this is nice. So it's like one minus cosine theta, so that would be like one minus two cosine theta plus cosine squared theta plus plus sine squared theta uh, d theta so that becomes just one so then this whole thing becomes root two minus uh, two cosine theta d theta and wait, there's something cool that I'm supposed to do now, but I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Um, I think that's just like, is wait. that some kind of half angle formula or something like that? <laughs> yes. yes, it is. Yeah. It is, it, if I, yeah, if I think of, okay, watch this, watch this. So I'm going to rewrite this as r integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of, so I'll factor out a, how am I doing? Uh, <laughs> 2 minus 2 cosine theta. I want that to be like over 4 here. Then I'm also going to put in a 2. Why did I do that exactly? Oh yeah, because, because then this, this is just r integral from 0 to 2 pi of, uh, well 2r I guess. <laughs> And then this becomes the square root of, this just now just is 1 minus cosine theta over 2. I probably could have just done this without um, flexing this half angle formula with some sort of u sub or something. We need known to come Woo! Um, anyway, what is that? That is like 1 half theta. Almost. It is, in fact, sine of 1 half theta, right? Because the other formula is like sine 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Who's with me? And therefore, um, we get that sine squared theta 
is Wait, 1 I minus think I side need to show 2 that. theta over 2. I'm just rederiving the half angle form of this. And now if you take the square root of both sides, then you get that sine theta is like root 1 minus sine 2 theta over 2. And now just like replace theta with like theta over 2 or whatever. That's like a re-derivation of the cool say cool. That's pretty cool. All right. So um, really, really what I end up with here is uh, 2r <coughs> integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine theta over 2 d theta, which just makes it really easy to uh, and differentiate. What is the integral of sine theta over 2? I guess it's like negative. You need to put it on this. So it's going to be like 4 now, right? 4 r cosine theta over 2. Let me just double check that if I think it's right. Um, yeah, because the derivative of cosine theta over 2 is negative sine theta over 2 back inside of half. Um, what's up? I don't know how to say it. 0 to 5. All right, so my final answer is negative 4r times cosine of pi, which is negative 1, um, minus cosine of 0, which is 1. Uh, and so I get negative 4r times negative 2. Answer? 8r. 8r. Whoa. The, um, no. It's just like, I don't know. It's like worse <laughs> math. Yeah, like the length, so the length of the cycloid is 8 radii. That's so bad. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, good. How much time is left in this period? Five minutes. Perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five minutes? Nine minutes? Oh, well, that's all I need then. Um, I got another curve for you. It's called the asteroid. It is like the one that we have seen before, which has parametric <laughs> Yeah. Let the record show that as I'm being laughed at by a room full of teenagers, that this is the word asteroid, which is a different word than the word asteroid, the, the space object. This is not the correct spelling for the space object, but it's not a space object, it's that object. Please. Yeah, good. Woo. X equals A cosine cubed T, Y equals A sine cubed T. This is just like a problem that we just did in pre-calc C. Do you remember this day? No, it's the other one, man. It's the. Yo. Okay, and I'm not going to go through the pre-calculus that um, tells us that this is the correct shape, but like, do you kind of like remember this-ish? Yeah. Right? Because like, if you've got cosine and cosine cubed in the same axis.